Gotham after Batman. <laughs> right. It's like the city's still trying to like dry out from that flood, you know, and then there's the whole Riddler mess. Right. And now, boom, the Penguin decides yeah. it's his time to shine. You guys know we love to get into all the nitty gritty details you might have missed. Oh, we do. And you've been sending in tons of requests to break down the premiere of The Penguin. So we're doing a deep dive Absolutely. on After Hours. Yeah. That's episode one. And we're going way deeper than your typical recap here. Oh, for sure. Especially since we've got these awesome insights from the Movie Mistakes podcast to dig into. Get ready, because this one doesn't waste any time. It gets intense right from the jump. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Right off the bat, we're talking about a serious power move. Penguin taking out Alberto Falcone. Hmm. It's brutal, it's efficient, and honestly, it just sets the tone for the entire show. Mm -hmm. This is a whole new Gotham. Right. This is not your mama's penguin. No. This isn't Danny DeVito twirling an umbrella. Nope. Colin Farrell is bringing a whole different energy much darker. Yeah. You can practically feel the ambition radiating off of him. Oh, Ruthlessness, just the way he carries himself. Yeah. And that's one of the things the source actually calls out. They describe him as yeah. cunning, ambitious, ruthless. Yeah. And you see it in every single scene. Yeah. But that opening, come on, that's just masterful. Farrell and the filmmakers, they knew exactly what they were doing. This penguin, he's dangerous. Mm -hmm. And he sees a Gotham that's primed for the taking. And let's be real. Gotham is looking pretty vulnerable right now. Oh, yeah. This isn't the Gotham where Batman just swoops in to save the day at the last minute. Right. How do you think this post-disaster Gotham, you know, still reeling from everything in the Batman, how does that impact Penguin's rise? I think it makes his grab for power so much more believable and honestly way more terrifying because Gotham is hurting. The city's vulnerable, yeah. desperate for someone to step in and take charge. And Penguin... As brutal as he can be, yeah. might just be that someone. It's your classic power vacuum, but with that signature Gotham darkness. It's true. Yeah. And then you've got this new character, Victor Aguilar. He gets pulled into Penguin's world. All right. And the source we're looking at points out how vulnerable he is. But in a show that's already got all these big personalities, totally. what makes Victor someone we should even care about? It's the contrast. You've got Penguin, right? He's at the top of his game, ruthless, calculating the whole nine yards. Yeah, right. And then you have Victor who is young, he's uncertain, kind of weighing over his head. Totally. But he's drawn into Penguin's orbit anyway. He becomes an accomplice. Right. Maybe even, dare I say, a protege. Oh, interesting. So that dynamic, I mean, that's really interesting to think about. Does Victor become just another casualty of Penguin's ambitions? Or could he become a wild card? The podcast kind of hints that it could go either way. Oh, 100%. Mm. And it's that uncertainty that makes the Penguin so gripping. Because it's not just a power struggle. It's watching these characters make decisions that could either, like, redeem them. Redeem them, yeah. Or completely destroy them. It's true. It's true. It's so good. And we can't forget about the other big name in Gotham. Right. The one who probably has a bone to pick with all this. Sophia Falcone. Yeah. Yeah. The podcast called her a powerful antagonist. What'd you make of her grand entrance? Oh, Sophia's a wild card for sure. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we know she was locked up in Arkham. Right. But now she's back, and something tells me she's not here to just, you know, sit back and watch. No kidding. Yeah. They don't totally spell out her motives in this episode. Yay. But you get this feeling that she's not going to let Penguin just waltz in and take over everything her family built. Absolutely not. Yeah. This is her city. Right. She's a Falcon. Her release from Arkham just throws this whole power struggle into chaos, you know. Mm -hmm. Is it revenge for her brother? Right. Does she have her own vision for Gotham's underbelly? Or maybe something else entirely? It's it's hard to say. And that's what I love. They could have made this another predictable Batman bad guy story. Oh, totally. But the Penguin is like, hold on. It's different. There's layers here. Yeah. It's more nuanced. Absolutely. And the podcast even points this out how they really get into the characters and their backstories and what makes them tick. Right. I mean, take Penguin, right? We see these glimpses of his past, his mom, yeah. his rise to the top. Right. It makes you almost, I don't know, sympathize with him a little bit. Almost, yeah. Like, is there a part of him deep down that wants out? Right. But Gotham, it just sucks you back in. Gotham doesn't let go that easily. No, it doesn't. It really is like its own character. Oh, yeah. This force that just shapes everyone's destiny mm. for better or worse you know totally and in this new gotham the gotham after the flood 
it's even more intense. Well, it's heavier. Like the city's drowning. Yeah, and you feel that in every frame. Oh, yeah. The podcast mentioned the director, Craig Zobel, and you can tell mm -hmm. he knows how to build tension. Yes. It's in every scene. You're on the edge of your seat waiting for the other shoe to drop. Totally. <laughs> it's definitely not the over-the-top kind of campy Gotham we've seen before. No, no. This is... This feels real. This is gritty. This is real. And then that escape scene. Oh, my God. Yeah, I bet. So brutal. Brutal. They did not hold back on the violence. No. And it makes it clear the stakes are high. Mm -hmm. But even though Penguin gets away, thanks to Victor, it doesn't feel like a win. No, no. It feels like a very temporary reprieve. Exactly. Yeah. The source actually says it point blank. This is just the beginning of the war for Gotham's soul. And with Sofia Falcone back in the picture. Mm. Yeah. Things are going to get messy. This isn't about turf or money anymore. Right. This is about legacy, about revenge, about the future of Gotham itself. It's true. It really makes you wonder, can Gotham ever really break free from its past? Right. Or is it always going to be caught in this cycle of, like, power grabs and revenge? That's the big question, yeah. right? And what I love about the Penguin is that it doesn't try to give you easy answers. Right. Like, it makes you think about the nature of violence. Yeah. The pull that power has over people. It's true. And can someone like Oswald Cobblepot, can he escape that pull? Yeah, can he really change? The podcast talked about power and revenge being big themes. Go. What do you think? Are those two things actually different or are they kind of two sides of the same coin? That's a good question. I, I mean, on the surface, Penguin's just ambitious. Yeah. Right. Filling the void. Exactly. Yeah. But then you see these moments, these glimpses of something else. Oh, yeah. Like this pain, this need to prove himself. Maybe even some messed up love for his mom. It's true. It's like they make you feel for him. Right. And that's what gets me because then it's not just another crime show, you know. It's more than that. You're invested in these characters, their choices. Totally. And speaking of choices, we were talking about Sofia Falcone before. Oh, yeah. She's a mystery. Total mystery. What's her end game? We still don't know. Right, right. But you can tell she's dangerous. I mean, Arkham will do that to you. Oh, yeah, for sure. But she's also so in control. You know, like she's playing a much deeper game than anyone realizes. She's got a plan. Oh, she's got a plan. The podcast mentioned that this first episode, yeah. it's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, yeah. Like the war for Gotham, it's just getting started. For sure. What are you most excited to see play out? Honestly, I want to see how Penguin handles Sophia. Oh, good point. She changes everything. And what about Victor? Does he get caught in the crossfire? Or does he break free? Oh, that's a good one. And the biggest question of all, what happens to Gotham without Batman there to save them? Right. Can Gotham ever really be saved? It's a city drowning in its own darkness. It really is. Well, I think it's safe to say the Penguin is not pulling any punches. This is going to be a wild ride. Oh, absolutely. This is a top-tier TV right here. Yeah. Amazing characters, gripping story. You're going to be hooked. So if you're looking for a show that throws you head first into the underbelly of Gotham that doesn't shy away from the dark stuff, you need to check out The Penguin. Seriously, go watch it. We'll be back next week with another deep dive. But until then, keep those theories coming and we'll see you in Gotham.